Bank robberies and heists are a big part of Red Dead Redemption 2 and Grand Theft Auto 5. With Grand Theft Auto 6 coming hopefully sometime soon, I think it's a safe bet to assume that they are going to continue to be a major part within that game's mission design. And as such, they're going to continue to become more complex, both in setup, potentially requiring us to pick our crew similar to that of Grand Theft Auto 5, more intense shootouts and elaborate getaways that we see done in Red Dead Redemption 2. And while both of those games execute bank robberies and heists phenomenally well, and each one stands out in in their own unique way but for me personally my favorite bank robbery to date isn't even from either one of these games to my knowledge it is the first bank robbery rockstar has ever attempted in a grand theft auto game i could be wrong but that is my impression the robbery takes place at the bank of liberty in liberty city in grand theft auto 4 under the mission name three leaf clover this was a mission given to you by a character named patrick or, or packy mccreary and all the bs is cut out there's no setup no picking the crew case in the place or additional surveillance you are the hired gun recruited on the spot and it's you packy his brother derek their childhood friend saint michael that then decide to take on a federal institution in the middle of chinatown and the mission kicks off pretty wild too with packy doing a line of coke and for the first time nico is introduced to his two brothers that prior to this mission you've really only ever heard a little bit about through conversations and rumors from the other brothers the middle brother gerald was a former leader of the irish mob and starts being a little tense towards nico and honestly is a little bit oppositional with including him on what he considers to be family affairs and you? Nothing personal, but don't fuck with my family, or I will fuck with yours. But I assure you, all the negative interactions after this are all directed at and towards each one of the other three accomplices in the bank robbery. From Packy, Derek, and St. Michael all attacking each other on the car ride to the bank robbery. I got enough PE4 here to get through anything they throw at us. PE4? I never heard of that. It's some limey name for C4 that Derek here picked up over there. I ain't having this argument with you, Patrick. Safe to say, what we're using is controllable enough to go through any vault door without incinerating whatever's inside. Not gonna leave much residue on the notes either, so they should be washable. Oh, they're going to be washable, all right. Can't wait to see what sort of kick C4 residue is gonna give me when I snort up a line of chop through one of them notes. First, you're a fucking charmer, Patrick. Second, it's PE4, not C4. Whatever, at least I'm honest about my habits, Derek. You know nothing about nothing, Patrick. I'm honest about me demons. Hit the needle on the old head there, did I, Derek? Expression is, hit the nail on the head, Packy. Really, Michael? You don't think I know that? And Jerry was right about you, Mikey. Your parents must have been twins to produce a kid as dumb as you. I'm surprised you ain't got three eyes, no balls, and a club foot. Don't bring my parents into this, Packy. All right, all right. Between Grand Theft Auto V as well as Red Dead Redemption 2, I don't think we have a single heist or robbery crew as seemingly as dysfunctional as this group right here. With Packy and Derek putting each other's addictions on full display, and them arguing on something as trivial as the name of the explosive that Derek is choosing to use, and then Packy resulting to incest jokes towards St. Michael whenever he jumps in and tries to correct Packy in a particular saying. It's a unique group dynamic to say the least, and this initial car ride does set the tone for the remainder of the mission, with trivial arguments happening between Patrick and his brother Derek. But eventually the crew ends up getting to the Bank of Liberty, masked up, kicking the door down, demanding everyone gets on the ground, typical stuff of what we're accustomed to now with a sequel. Another interesting aspect to this mission, however, is that we are introduced to Luis, the protagonist of the Ballad of Gay Tony DLC. There's actually quite a bit of tie-ins with Grand Theft Auto 4 and all the DLC characters that we end up coming across, and how how each individual story intertwined into the main story is very interesting and we'll go into it into a later video but right now let's take a look at how the bank robbery ends up ending before the police end up arriving the pe4 has been molded and is set to explode in 60 seconds now listen people we're your friends me and me brother here why are you telling them we're brothers you idiot that's gonna make it hard for them to find us isn't it i'm trying to be honest with these people we put them through a lot today Fuck these people fuck your cause that shit's over Ireland's not the only thing that's green. Dollars are too. Now you said bloody Ireland. That's gonna narrow the search, ain't it? Fuck you! Take the needle out your arm, then tell me what to do. I'll let you tell me what to do when you stop shoving half a Bolivia up your nose every Saturday night. Motherfucker! <laughs> fuck! Oh. We told you not to fuck with us! Oh. Shit! Michael! Say fucking Michael! <laughs> fucking shit! Get the money! Leave my brother and watch the kids! 
while potentially exposing their identities and how to find them along with, again, their habits on full display here, the arguing between Patty and Derek got Michael shot and killed. Now back when I first experienced the scene, it wasn't so much the death that got me, it was more so the mention of their drug abuse that had me shocked. Boys had absolutely nothing to hide and gave zero fucks on who knew it, and the back and forth was still kind of funny to me at the time, but this is where the fun part begins. With the money on your back, it's now time to fight through waves of police, firing down open streets, going down alleyways, and tight corridors where in some spots SWAT members are up on fire escapes raining hell on you, eventually forcing the three of you to break off and try to escape through the subway system. I gotta say, for what I still consider to be Rockstar's first attempt at a major bank robbery, there was multiple steps and elements to it. I mean, sure, the entire aspect of having everyone get down on the ground was all cutscene related. You didn't really move around inside the bank until the bomb went off and then you had to go inside the vault and collect your money, but everything after that, going down the alleyways, this street, that street, clearing out the police in front of you while also trying to fight the police that are coming in from behind, trying not to be barricaded or circled in one particular spot, and then fighting police while you enter the metro system down the subway tunnel. Naturally, over time, I did forget a huge chunk of this mission, and the whole running down the subway kind of shocked me again in a good way. I really enjoyed the whole idea of backpedaling while firing at the police trying to escape. And while firing at the police, you can still kind of hear Patrick and Derek a little bit at each other's throats with the name of the explosives, how it happened, what's going on. The only downside is they really don't mention too much about the death of St. Michael. I mean, I guess you can chalk it up to their family being so heavy and mob ties that the death of loved ones or the death of friends and family, stuff like that, isn't as big of a deal to them as, say, quote unquote, normal people or civilians. But it would have been nice to see a little bit more of that dialogue, a little bit more of that, damn, we fucked up. Even if it was in their own argumentative way where neither one of them really wants to take the blame or shift it onto the other person or even onto each other, something. They do mention it once or twice, but nowhere near as much as I felt like they really should have. And I think that's somewhere Rockstar has really improved on their, their dialogue between their characters. And once you finally make it out of the metro, all you gotta do is find a four-door car and then take these two guys home. There's no lose the police, find somewhere, get rid of the heat, then take us home. No, you can actually take them straight home with the cops on you, which is not a good idea because all the bridges are barricaded, essentially making it pure hell to try and take them home with the police on you. I will say this though, my first attempt I failed, I ended up getting Derek killed and there was an ending cutscene that I, I kind of wish Rockstar would bring back instead of the whole mission failed or wasted. And I'm gonna show you what that dialogue was. Michael and Derek, it ain't worth it. I get it, nothing elaborate or mind-blowing, but I would still prefer this a thousand times over than the instant mission failed. I don't know, I just wanted to take a nice trip down memory lane. I still think Three Leaf Clover, although outshined in particular areas by subsequent robberies and heists and, and Rockstar's subsequent titles like Red Dead and Grand Theft Auto V, I still think this one was phenomenal, especially for Rockstar's quote-unquote first attempt. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you guys ever played Grand Theft Auto 4, did this mission stand out as much as I claim it did with me saying it's probably probably the best mission in the entire game, or do you still prefer Grand Theft Auto 5 or even Red Dead Heist? Let's talk down in the comments section. But in the meantime, if you guys didn't see it, maybe take a look at Rockstar and how their approach to Grand Theft Auto 6 should be. A little bit more arcadey or a little bit more realistic. That should be popping up on your screen right now.